Uh, my name is John Tai, and I'm the founder and the chief disclosure officer for Whistleblower Aid. We're a not-for-profit legal organization based in Washington, D.C., and we represent uh, Mudge Zatko with his disclosures about Twitter. So he really uh, put a lot out there to go public. Can you describe his emotional state? What was it like for him to go public? Well, this was a difficult thing for much. Um, uh, he understood the risks to his to his career, to his family, and we've already seen Twitter uh, make false statements just in the last couple of days about why he was fired and the circumstances uh, of that. Um, uh, of course, they're trying to distract and, and pin this on Mudge, um, when in fact, uh, you know, that's just a, a classic tactic to to try to take the conversation away from the very real security and privacy. About Mr. Zacco, he knows the risk going public, uh, but yet why did he step forward with this stunning complaint? Well, uh, he had been recruited personally by Jack Dorsey back in 2020 after a very embarrassing hack of the platform by teenagers who were able to take over a bunch of very high profile accounts, uh, Elon Musk, Kim Kardashian, uh, Barack Obama, others, Bill Gates, um, and, and ask their followers for Bitcoin. Um, Dorsey understood that there were serious systemic problems at the company on privacy, on security, on um, content integrity, and recruited Mudge to come in and try to fix these things that have been languishing for years. And, and he knew the risks going forward. So what motivated him to go public? Well, Mudge has uh, a long track record of trying to ensure that technology is used for good. He had made a commitment to Jack Dorsey, to the board of directors, to Twitter's users, to himself, that he was going to get to the bottom of these problems. Um, and when he was thwarted from the inside, uh, he didn't give up and he, he became a lawful whistleblower. So this is Mudge, you know, uh, keeping his promise to himself. It sounds like his motivation was bigger than this, just bigger than one uh, tech company, the one he worked at. This is more about the industry as a whole. Well, that's true. I mean, I, I, he was actually offered the job of the chief information security officer of the United States of America, a, a day one um, position in the Biden administration. He turned it down because he felt like he could do more good at Twitter. So, so, so both his decision to join, to stay there, and to become a lawful whistleblower were, were things that uh, he and his wife uh, decided together were important for their, really their moral obligation, um, you know, uh, to the world and, and, the, and the community of users and even people who don't use Twitter who are affected by misinformation on the platform. Why should people be concerned about his allegations in his whistleblower complaint? Well, you have one of the world's experts in this area saying that one of the most important platforms on earth uh, has top to bottom problems on information security, on privacy, on content integrity, uh, not only no controls, but not even measurement of, uh, of the problems on the platform. And, you know, again, we've seen ethnic violence, we've seen electoral interference, we've seen misinformation, we've seen vast privacy leaks, uh, exposure of people's personal information, um, to adversaries, to, to, to corporate espionage, all kinds of things. Um, there's a lot of bad actors out there who, whose full-time job is trying to penetrate these platforms and, and misuse the data. What's his bigger worry about big tech platforms handling of user data and safeguarding national security information? Well, broadly speaking, these tech platforms have a huge role to play, as we've seen over the last decade in national elections. You know, I, I think a lot of people were surprised to learn how the platforms can be weaponized by adversaries um, to spread dissension and polarization um, in you know, otherwise healthy democracies. Just a couple of years before, Facebook had been used by uh, the Burmese military, the, the military of Myanmar, um, as part of its genocidal activities against the Rohingya um, in Myanmar. And that was a warning to Mudge, who of course was following that kind of thing very closely about how these platforms could be abused. Certainly did not want to see Twitter ever used for something like that. These platforms have implications for you know, ethnic violence around the world, but also for you know, healthy democracies and elections um, in the wealthier parts of the world.